uh, Mike, with the, the Gruden uh, resignation on Monday night and the material that was in his emails, how much of that maybe is uh, indicative of some of the, t uh, the, the thoughts in the NFL, or reflective of what's in the, across the levels of the NFL, or is it an outlier? Well, I, Teresa, I would have no idea what the thoughts are. I know that John and I are, um, every day that we come to work, we try to provide an environment uh, for our players, our staff, our organization. Um, that's about winning, and, and we're trying to do everything we can to, to help our players and you know, just be positive every single day. And I, I wouldn't have any idea uh, what would go around and, and what would be indicative of the league. I could just focus on what's here and, and what we try to do every day. From emails like that, is there anything that you need to say to your players, or is it just um, did you just feel like that culture you guys have in place where it doesn't really No, I would <clears throat> No, we, that wouldn't be anything that I would even – you know, discuss or, you know, I mean, we're just focused on the bills and uh, focused on, um, you know, just building a build a family, you know, taking care of things that come up every day uh, with with our, um, you know, with our players, uh, their health, their preparation, uh, their mental and physical, you know, well-being. Tyson Brio's retirement, uh, was that related to the injury issue that he had with his foot or was it just, uh, did it kind of catch you off guard at all? Uh, no, I mean, nothing catches me off guard. I think, you know, I mean, you guys you know, talk to Ty. I think that would be the, the best thing for you guys to do. He informed us that, you know, he was going to retire. And uh, that, that's, what, uh, that's what he did. So, you know, I want to talk to Ty. What, uh, what do you lose with, without having Ty around? Like, like what, what impact does that have with the line now? None whatsoever. You know, we're going to focus on the Bills and, and their defensive line rotation, and um, you know, we're, we're, that that's where our focus is. You know, I mean, Ty, Ty talked to us last week. That's I'm um, I'm moving on, like I do with a lot of things. Force like Dylan him. into a spot that that you've judged him not to be ready for up till now. Well, just you know, again, we go through this all the time. Just just ask the question, and Dylan's going to be prepared like he is every week. You know, I don't need your opinion. I don't need, you know, we'll just ask the question and we'll get Dylan ready. Um, he's been available. Uh, he's been improven. And, um, you know, we'll see where it is, you know, over the weekend. How do you like back and, and how quickly are you hoping he can get up to speed for you? Well, we got to evaluate where he's at through the course of practice. You know, there's a return to play for a reason. We feel like... Um, you know, we've been been able to evaluate guys. You know, Marcus was a was an extra week, and you know some other guys. So, you know, Monty's not the only guy that's doing that. Um, we'll see where he is, see how he responds. I think for the most part, I've, I've noticed with these guys, it's it's kind of how they respond after you know some work. So, you know, we'll see what that looks like on you know Friday, and you know obviously he'll do some stuff today and tomorrow. So, hopefully, you know that's that's positive. Christian Fulton, I know, kind of in and out of the lineup with various things. Uh, how is he coming along? Is he someone you expect to you know, see participate in practice? Uh, we'll see where he's at this afternoon. I, I, you know, I don't know where he'll be and how much he'll do. I don't know how much you know the entire team will do. You know, we're focusing on individual work today. Uh, we get an extra day working on, um, you know, just recovery. We like that Avery Williams. So we hope to get out of him. I just provide depth. You know, provide depth at that position. Um, you know, Avery's played a lot of football, um, winning football. So, you know, we'll kind of see where that is, um, see how quickly he gets, you know, caught up to speed. What do you see on tape, his strengths as a player? He's a you know, good run defender. He's, um, you know, quick, you know, diagnosis, reads, reacts. Uh, we, you know, I liked him, watched him when he was here. I haven't seen a whole lot of him. Uh, since then, I know it, he moved on in free agency about the same time I got here. Do you expect Julio to uh, participate in the individual stuff today that you're talking about? Yeah, you guys get to cover individuals, so you guys will be able to report on that. What do you think about Dawson Knox when he came out? And uh, what do you think about him now as a, as a player and the impact he makes for their offense? Um, yeah, we spent a lot of time. You know, local kid, we spent a lot of time on here. He came and visited with us. Back when they had the local, I guess pro days, you know, he didn't didn't work out. He didn't have to, but he came in and you know visited and you know got to know him. I think I ran into his grandfather 
somewhere out in, you know, somewhere near Hillsborough, I think. And uh, that was pretty cool to see, you know, draft my grandson. And I said, well, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are trying to draft him. And just remember his story of being a walk on at, at Ole Miss and, you know, fighting and earning a scholarship, changing positions uh, from quarterback, very athletic, uh, very good mover, um, catches the football, um, doesn't, doesn't fight it. And, um, you know, really, you know, really earned the trust of, of the quarterback. You, know, you see that the other night they threw one up and, and really the, you know, the defender was, you know, pretty close. I think that was a, you know, 50-50 ball that he knew that, you know, Dawson was going to come down with and he went and high pointed it and Josh made a good throw. Did he present any different challenges or any bigger challenges than he did a year ago? I don't, I don't, just watched him this year, and he seems to get open and score touchdowns. The Bills are a team that don't seem to have a lot of weaknesses. They're pretty solid, both offense and defense. Is it harder to formulate a plan of attack against a team like that that's so solid on both sides of the ball? Well, I mean, I think probably forming it's the easy part. I mean, I think executing it would be the tough part. They're number one in, you know, a lot of categories, scoring, um, you know, both offensively and defensively. Third down, very high in both offense and defense. Number one in the defense in the league in red zone, you know, plus nine in turnover margin. Um, you know, outscoring opponents, um, you know, 160 something to, to to 40 or 50 in the last four games with two shutouts. So. Um, this is a this is a huge challenge. Run defense defense is is number three. What's what's good about their the run defense? Uh, they they play sound. They play fast. Um, you know, good good tacklers. Great effort. Good fundamentals. You know, a lot of respect for for what Sean and uh, that staff has done. You know, it's also a group that's been together for a while. Toronto, I think, in the back end. You know, you can look at the safeties and, and that group, and they've got a nickel that tackles and triggers and, and blitzes. The safeties are good blitzers. Um, the linebackers have all, you know, they've been together. The front's a little different uh, with some new bodies in there, but they're, they're young and, and athletic, and Oliver is, is, is a disruptor, um, and they play a lot of guys up front. I know the circumstances were probably more extreme, the, the Houston game your first year, but you told your team, like, if we do these three things, we mm -hmm. can win. Is there, is there any degree of that this week? I haven't figured that out yet. That came about four hours before the game when I figured that out, but because we were scrambling. Um, you know, there'll be more clarity, I think, as the week goes on. I think we have an idea how we'd like to play the football game. And, you know, we have to take care of the ball here um, against them and their talent last year. was, you know, we got three turnovers and we, we didn't give any of them up. So that was a large uh, factor. A lot of their success has been, you know, tied to, um, you know, those turnovers. You know, they're creating short fields, you know, for their offense and, and hitting explosive plays. And um, so that would be a great place to start. Are, are there weeks more than others where you win it? You can win it more with, with what you do on Tuesday with the plan? I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I just know that, you know, we have to, you know, ultimately – Put a plan in that the players understand that they're they're confident in that allows them to play fast and, and aggressive and you know fly around. Um, so you know the plan is only as good as the execution. You guys have seen Josh Allen now. This will be the fourth time you've seen him. How have you seen him grow from your vantage point? I, I think you know to trust the offensive line. He's a lot more patient. You know he'll wait things out. I think there's. Some good anticipation. Um, I think he's a, and again, I'm sure you guys will shred holes in this, but his deep ball accuracy is pro, John like that. I just felt like watching on film, I think the deep ball accuracy um, is, is really good. You know, and I don't know, and I think maybe a couple years ago, he was maybe airmailing some of those because his arm, you know, I mean, I don't know. I just, I kind of think back and, you know, me, they were taking shots, and I think maybe he was overthrowing some guys. Um, but he's really, um, you know, accurate. He made a throw the other night in the game, um, you know, to his left down the seam that you know, 
couldn't have defended it, you know, no matter what they had called. Do you think your tight end production is more a function of your personnel or the way you're deploying? Well, they just try to catch the ones that we throw them. And when they don't cover them, you know, Ryan's been able to throw to them. So, you know, um, you know, they, they're they're part of the plan. They have a they have a responsibility in the offense, and um, you know they've been um, pretty sure-handed. I think you know. I mean, we, everybody has a few drops, but you know. And then we've asked some of them to chip on on third down. We've asked we've asked them to do that. How's it blocking been over, overall run game? Too? Um, you know, I'm sure there's some blocks they'd like to have back. I thought, you know, Jeff did a nice job last week. Um, played with some speed, um, you know. Pruse helped us on some runs. It's, you know, never going to be a hundred percent, but you know we've been able to run the ball efficiently, uh, and and all those guys play. When you face a team like Buffalo who's playing as well as they are, it's very hot. Do you see it as any kind of a measuring stick, or is that something that you don't even concern yourself? With? No, I mean I think every week, you know, in this league is is a huge challenge. I know that that comes off sometimes as just doesn't make sense, but it is. And it's it's learning a new scheme. It's learning a new set of players and a skill set. And hey, what these receivers do, what uh, what these guys, you know, bread and butter plays are, and what scheme plays you think you might get. So every week is a challenge, and um, none bigger than this one with the way that they're playing and the confidence level and um, you know what they do. It's a very good football team. Mike, I guess this is the one year anniversary of that Tuesday night game against them. And- Derek Stiffarm, what do you remember about that play and what was the energy like on the sidelines when he did that? Best five-yard run in football history.